And I like your um, your calendar a whole lot better than the accepted scientific calendars. I believe yours is more accurate. And again, compared to, to the Bible, bi- biblical prophecy and scripture, I think that uh, the young earth, if you will, if that's a maybe that's wrong terminology, but I believe that the time the, the time you reference is is much more accurate. And, you know, I, I, well, I, I built that on scientific evidence that a friend of mine, a fellow Christian named Barry Satterfield, I think he lives up in Washington State now. He, he was down in Australia when we were friends down there. He um, did a lot of research on the change in the speed of light from the Big Bang till now. Now, we all think that, you know, uh, Barry and I and others that follow this young universe, young Earth theory or hypothesis, we think that there was a big bang. It was like uh, there was the fluid of space sitting there doing nothing. And then the word of God went forth like a very complex waveform and swirls and swirls formed from the strength of it. And they formed into galaxies and then into stars and planets and moons. Now, this happened suddenly, catastrophically. And if you look at uh, the oh, probably 10 major theories about uh, the origin of the universe, they do allow for a very compact universe, so compact that it was like 60, 10 with 60 zeros after it, smaller, all compressed down into this little tiny spot in existence. And this erupted. That's the Big Bang. Now, when that happened, the thickness, the density of space and all the material that was being formed and pushed out was so great that the speed of light you know, and the speed of all electromagnetic radiation that's a waveform was 10, was 60 zeros behind it faster. So, uh, you know, the, the thinner, you know, the more spread out the universe became, then the slower the speed of light was because it didn't have that, that very narrow gap between particles to jump so they could travel faster as a wave. So as the universe expanded in age, the speed of light slowed down. So when an, a scientist today says, oh, Hmm. That star system out there traveling at the speed of light, well, the speed of light today, as we know it, would take, um, you know, 60 million years. Okay, that might be the case. But when the things were formed, light was traveling a lot faster. So our distance, you know, over the, over the period of time is not as great as people would think. Um, we, we, we traveled a lot faster in time anyway. It's based on scientific analyses of uh, measurements of the speed of light, and hence the change in radioactive decay, which is how we we rate the age of the universe and the Earth and the sun and various other star systems. When that is corrected, and it's a very convincing argument, when that is corrected, then the whole universe could be less than 100,000 years old, maybe even less than that. But the Earth itself could very well have been formed seven or eight Nine, ten thousand years ago, and cooled, and become, you know, what we see in the in the biblical account in Genesis. Not not so, only do I agree with that, I just I just want to toss this question out to our viewers and listeners. Don't you wish that when you were in school, you had Stan as your science teacher or <laughs> professor, or whatever? I, I I tell you what, I, that would be that that'd be great. You know, the speed of light thing I, that intrigues me so much, and, and the the words you used too about. Just about God spoke and in in, spoke everything into existence brings me to frequency and um, it, it's just such a marvelous to me such a rich in rich topics to talk about. Thank you. you know, uh, I occasionally I do wax poetic and in the uh, the cosmic conspiracy I did take a few pages to to set the stage and run it for God speaking for his voice becoming a complex waveform in nothingness out there and organizing it into all these things we see as swirls and curls and vortices. The, and the word was spoken and poof, out it went. As, you know, and, and I talk about how things danced and galaxies sang, you know, and stuff as they formed complex waveforms. Hmm. Uh, wow. You, anyway. you know, when you ponder that, it, it's just, it. I don't know. It's it's something that I, I like to. I certainly like to think about when I've got uh, when I've got the time, just to sit and think about how that how that played out, how that would have played out, and, and how and Stan, how can people not believe in God's creation? 
I just don't, don't quite get that. How would that, it, I don't know. That just leads me to look. There's so many interactive systems here, you know, biological systems and uh, geological systems that depend on each other. The living things, the living organisms, especially a lot of the insect population, um, had to have been formed from the start with the chemistry that makes them work and with the foods and things that they eat. They couldn't adapt to it. They, uh, some of them, like the beetle that uh, forms an explosive exhaust out its backside to to run off its enemies, has to inject two chemicals in there and make this explosive searing gas come out its tailpipe and you know run off the enemy well that wouldn't have happened by evolution because it would have killed the first one it did it if it didn't have the architecture to withstand this explosion a very simple thing like that but yeah the complexity of the human body you know of uh, mammals uh, the the more we learn about our dna and how it works and how it restructures and how you have a little dna processor that re rebuilds cells over 13 years so that Every 13 years, your whole body is replaced with new cells. These things don't happen by evolving. They are, they are set in motion as a, a construct, a program that is designed to work from the start, not to evolve, to design from the start. Now, they can modify and mutate due to environmental conditions, but that was put in the programming. That's not evolving from a lizard to a human. Or